Hello Capsulea, my name is Gildy and welcome to EVE Online. Third party tools, some of them people love, some not so much. And some Capsuleas can't find that one tool that would work the way they want. But if you're new to the game or maybe came back after a very very long break, you might not know or not remember the plethora of different tools that provide you with all the utility that the game lacks. This video will show you several of the tools from all areas of the game. I will quickly go over what you can do with them and what I use them for most often. This might be a 1 out of 2, maybe 3 videos or however many it takes, that I will make about third party tools since there is so many great ones, but if I miss any that you use often in this video, do let me know in the comments so I can look into them and maybe expand the list. First in line is EVE O Preview. No matter your stance on how multiboxing affects the game's health, it is here to stay. So, regardless of you wanting to maybe deploy a mining fleet and easily cycle through characters to compress, triple box abyssals, or live a sad life of an LP farmer in Insurgencies, EVO Preview is something that you will most likely need in your life. You can get it from the third party developers part of EVE forum, link to the thread with new releases will be in the video description. Then it's as simple as unpacking it and starting the executable which does its magic. This tool makes miniatures of your other opened EVE clients allowing you to not have to alt tab but rather choose this or that character by simply left clicking their miniatures. You can move the miniatures themselves by doing a right click and hold over any of them and then dragging them around and if you want to play with the settings find the app running in the tray on your taskbar and double click it. Here is where you can play around with some settings like hiding the preview of the active client which is useful once you memorize which character is where, so you subconsciously know which character you are on. Then there is opacity, ability to set up the exact thumbnail width and height, the ability to zoom in on hovering over a miniature, so you can take a peek at what is going on on the character screen. Go download it and play with it a little bit if you're multiboxing. Some of you might decide they want one screen per character, but some might have their eyes opened to a whole new world of free screen space this gives you to go watch YouTube while you play. Next up comes my favorite appraisal tool. Gone are the days of Eve appraisal, which was great, but had one thing that kept driving me mad. Every time you clicked in the window where you added items to appraise, it would select everything in there. So, if you tried adding items from different sources, you would sometimes delete everything you had there already. Here is where Janice enters the game. It's easy to use, the field where you paste the details doesn't do weird things, in advanced options you can set whatever price percentage you want to set up in case you're doing appraisal for some buyback, and if you want to compare prices between items, you can click here to swap between the total and single item price on the fly. And most importantly, Janice comes with an option to switch to dark mode so you don't burn your eyes out. If you need a more robust look at the market, you will love EVE Tycoon. It has a built-in appraisal tool by itself, but it also has a market browser allowing you to put in the item you are looking for and check its prices across all of New Eden and check market history in the region you want. It also comes with, if you log in and hand over your ESI information, trading tool that helps you track your transactions and manufacturing profits. However, since I am not into market PvP, but rather just produce items off of napkin math and dump them on the market that pays the most, I didn't really get into that part really, which is yours to explore. However, just for the ability to check price history on the fly without having to log in a character in each trade hub, if Tycoon gets a spot on the list. While we are at the topic of making money, let's do some PI, shall we? There are several tools available and everyone will get their favorite of course, 
but here are some of my picks that I have been using over the years. First, a great one, if you want to just make PI for selling it off for ISK is Eve Helper. You can hover over any of the materials and it will give you the average price per item or per cubic meter. It will also let you know by just the color of the numbers if that price is relatively low, medium or high for the level of PI the material is. It's a great tool, definitely check it out. For those that just want to know what goes into which planets, which materials you need and prefer a more minimalistic approach, you can visit Alice's PI scheme. This is the tool I've been using for years since I knew what I want to produce and I was putting all my PI into industry. This is also the first tool I have ever been using and have used it for years because it did the job greatly. Lastly, there is Eve Web Tools. It combines the simple design of Alice's website with all the graphical representation and summary of cost of all the materials. I moved on to using this one as it does nicely summarize, for example, how much ISK does each material cost. You can also easily select inputs or outputs for the item. So unlike Alice's website, you don't have to do all of the route. You can select only the parts you will need. What is also neat, which I had questions about in my older PI videos, is that if you hover over the material, it tells you how much a factory produces and how much of the lower tier materials you will need to produce it. Of course, everyone will have one they like the most. Go, check them out, see what style suits you the most, or if you got another one that you are using and want to recommend to others, drop it in the comments under this video. Maybe there is one out there that I haven't seen yet and that I will end up switching to. The last tool I want to share with you today is zkillboard.com. I know a lot of you out there don't care for it. I don't really care for my stats on it myself. But there are people that do, either by trying to take only fights they know they will win, or by killing a thousand shuttles a day just to show off that they are number one in using some ships. Zkillboard, especially when you are doing things like ninja mining, sitting out in some areas of space where you might be vulnerable to attack, can be a great intel tool. If you paste someone's name into the tool, you will see their profile, letting you know if they do go out and hunt, if they might be a Sino ult for someone, because they will have a lot of kills in Sino ships, or they are just another venture Sino ult that sits on station and docks and gets shot, so you can ignore them and keep on mining. If you do this often and try to think of what the results tell you, you will start getting an understanding of people's profiles and what that means, you will quickly start making a list of locals in your area that are a threat or not. Back to the example of ninja mining, let's say in Losec, if you keep checking profiles of other capsuleers, you can set personal standings to those that are hunters, leave no standings for harmless individuals, and soon enough you will have way less moments where you got to cloak up and get out because five-man group just entered system. You will no longer have to guess if they are hunters or not, because you know it's just Steve and his olds hauling through the low sec using it as a shortcut. This does not exhaust the uses of Z Killboard though. You can also put in system names into the search bar. It is not an end-all be-all security guarantee, but whenever I dive into wormholes, first thing I do is check these canvas stations, because well, if it's inhabited, I don't really want to overstay my welcome, but then I put the name of the system into Z Killboard. If I see the same corporation hunting there over and over again, if I see someone being taken down an hour before I entered the wormhole, I know that the risk of hunters being there and waiting for me is very high. Of course, having no activity does not guarantee that there isn't someone that just set up shop and is waiting for you, but it can be a good indication that will at least sometimes give you a big red flag when entering a wormhole. And that's the tools I got for you this week. If you got some that you think could be good to share, drop them in the comments below. 
I will try to make sure to check them all out and pick out some. I do have a list of others I want to share with you over the next videos as well, so stay tuned for the future videos. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a corp mate that might need it, leave a like, subscribe to see my future uploads, or even hop on my Discord server linked in the video description. If you are interested in what I will talk about next, my videos go up every Sunday. And if we never see each other in space again, Capsulea, fly safe.